What is up, ladies and gentlemen of my Facebook page? This is Chris, and I thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Okay. I want to make sure I say things in a way that doesn't get people offended or people take it the wrong way. Because the things that I've learned through my now going on three years of being quote-unquote awoken, I have definitely sped up my process by really thinking about things from all perspectives, not just one or two. And that's something we all have to realize. And I slowly am starting to distance myself from the well-known people that talk about this stuff. I mean, the bigger names. And I'm not going to suggest that anybody is purposely misleading us or doing things to manipulate or part of the corrupt system, because I don't know any of these people on a personal basis, and I don't want to assume. But there is definitely a thing called drowning in good intention, which means even if they are not trying to help the system by deliberately trying to mislead people, some of their actions, and there are people that have lots of followers, I mean in the thousands, that could be doing what could be detrimental to all of us. Now, one of the things I hear people saying in the truther community, in the awoken community, spiritual community, whatever you want to label it, because labels really are something we need to get rid of, because it puts people in a certain category and makes you almost feel like if you're in that category, you can't have other options. That's not how we have to think. But there are people in these communities that talk about things like losing the name. Now, I understand the concept behind that because I study this stuff. I've been researching this since 2011, and I was inspired by people like Dean Clifford. If it wasn't for him, I would have never gotten into this. He gave me the passion and the start. And I have nothing bad to say about people like Dean Clifford. He's a great man. He's really trying to make his achievement. But he's showing by example of what happens when we all think in an individual basis. Now, I'm not trying to say what he's doing is wrong, and I thoroughly appreciate his attempts to try and help change the system. He's a great man. And I'm only using the example of the fact that it's almost been a year now that he's been in prison, where the judges are purposely ignoring his information. They're going through his personal property like his mail. They're telling him straight out that he cannot do the regular court system. They're making it extremely difficult. So we all have to understand that individualism is not going to work in unity. Now, if we all in this community, and I use that in quotes because there's so many different variations of it, it's kind of interesting how widespread it is. The whole divide and conquer thing works better than you even think in this awoken community. But if we realize that we all come from one, if that's something that you're ready to understand or comprehend, well, individualism is never going to work to fix the whole. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's talk about, like they say, about losing the name. I understand the concept behind it. I understand it's trying to get people in the right direction. But if people have this individual sense of, well, I lost the name, I got rid of my birth certificate, I no longer have a driver's license, I'm free, so life is wonderful. It may be for you, but it's not helping the whole world fix themselves and get out of it. You can't have a couple of individuals that are doing what they feel is right. And again, I'm not trying to say to anybody they're doing it wrong or they're corrupt. I'm just assuming that they have good intentions, but like they say, the path to hell is paved in good intention. But if we keep letting the powers that be, the people that are really in control, and whatever level you want to think of depends on how much you've researched and what you're willing to believe, because belief is nothing more than your opinion of hoping that you're right. So keep that in mind. But until we become whole, it's never going to change. And I use examples like a pirate ship. Think of it like, I've said this in other videos, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to use a lot of analogies because it helps put people in a better understanding. And especially my, my train of thought. Because since I've started researching, since I've been sun gazing, and I'm almost up to 43 minutes at this point, 
My mind has expanded. My consciousness has expanded. My ability to see things in ways that other people may not have definitely increased. And I want to pass that on to people willing to put their egos aside and see us all as a whole and learn from this. So I try and keep it basic. I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence. It's just I find it's a better way to help people. Let's put the world like the people that are in control. Think of it like a captain of a pirate ship and he hires a hundred crew gives them cannons for the ship puts money into the ship so it's well very well fortified it's a huge ship can carry thousands of people he gives all his um, employees guns to be able to kidnap people to work for that ship and they go around and let's say they're able to get 10,000 people and those 100 people use their guns, use fear, use intimidation, use their weapons to get tribal people, innocent people, a variety of people who get scared, kidnapped, and forced onto that pirate ship to become slave labor so they can profit off of you. Think of the world in that sense, just on a smaller scale. Now, you're now out to sea, in the middle of the ocean. You don't know where you are, and you're being forced to do labor you don't want to do. You're being intimidated. If somebody gets out of line, they throw one overboard, or they shoot them to show an example of they mean business. And the people cower. The 10,000 cower to the 100 because those 100 who are really afraid to lose their power have to really ruffle their feathers, so to speak, to intimidate those masses so they think twice about trying to fix their situation. Now, let's just say people, these the slaves get so tired of doing all this work, but they're afraid to do anything because they're afraid that, you know, one of their best friends got knocked over the ship or got shot. And let's just say one person decides to say, you know what, I no longer recognize who I am. And I know this is a fraud, and I have control of my life, so I'm going to go to the captain and say, here, here's my paperwork, I'm no longer part of the system. And let's just say he doesn't shoot you, or he doesn't throw you off the boat. And he says, okay, you know what? We'll let you be free. Where are you going to go when you're stuck on that boat in the middle of nowhere, on a boat you do not command? Think of it in that perspective. When you give away your driver's license and you give up your name, because I've heard the expression, lose the name, win the game. What game have you won when you are on their property, stuck in the middle of the ocean, hypothetically and you know, hypothetically speaking? You can't go anywhere, and all the other people are still, a slave, are still slaves and they're working, and they're being treated more miserable because now they have to pick up for your slack. And the captain's still running the ship. So where are you going? You're free on the slave ship? So just imagine if you are a person that no longer has a license. And let's say you did it all the legitimate way. You gave back your birth certificate. You did all the wonderful things. And the slave master sends you a document that says, you know what? You're now free. You're free to go wherever you want. Who owns the property and the land? So if you get pulled over by a rogue cop who has no idea who you are and can care less, and they have a power ego trip, and you try and sit there and argue with them. It's like, oh, I am. I don't recognize the name, and I'm not a citizen, and I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm free, and I'm this. And what if he decides to say, you know what? <clears throat> You're free now. Or what if he just decides to throw you in jail? And the judges don't want to hear it because, you know what? They want to set an example of what happens to the slaves that try and free themselves individually when they're in control. So whether it's done on purpose to lull you to sleep or whether it's done to have the whole drowning in good intention, they're using the oldest trick in the book, which is divide and conquer. And that's one of the reasons why, for example, I've stopped listening to certain people. 
And I'm going to try not to say that many names because I don't want to offend anybody because I don't want them to think they're evil or they're bad or they're corrupt. Like I said, I don't know them personally. I don't know what their real intentions are. Only they do. So if they're a corrupt part of the system and they're acting, they're doing a good job. If they're helping the system unknowingly because, you know, drowning a good intention, there's a reason why they let people protest. Like a famous Rothschild once said, as long, let them protest all they want as long as they pay their taxes. So if the governments work with the banks who work with England and the kings, who work with the Vatican, who, if you want to believe there's aliens or something like that, that's up to you. But there's always these higher forms of control because money controls and money is nothing more than debt. It's a slave ship. A few people, they'll let get off the ship. but Well, they'll make them stop working. But they're still part of the system. And until the masses wake up and say, it's time to be free, things are not going to change. And like they say, if you don't research history, you're doomed to repeat it. We have had slaves since the recording of time. It hasn't changed. Look at the concept of how America first started as a republic. It did it. Unfortunately, it had to do it through war. So I'm not condoning war. There are peaceful ways this can get done. But what they tried to do was say no more. And unfortunately, the banks eventually took over and re-corrupted it. But just think about, go back to that pirate ship. And think about the fact of the one or two people who they let go free because they didn't want to have them inspire the others to revolt. Think about why sometimes they let some of the individuals go. A couple of hundred, a couple of thousand when there's billions of people on the planet. That's a drop in the hat. It doesn't help. It doesn't hurt them. They can, you know, like they say, you know, you can't make an omelet without baking, breaking a few eggs. Now, just imagine the 10,000 slaves on that ship, if they all decided to talk and say, you know what, we're tired of being on the ship and we protest, we hold up our signs every now and then, but a few of us get shot or thrown overboard, or at the very least, we still have to work. So we're going to stop this now. We're going to take over the ship and they don't need guns. They don't need violence. Just imagine if 10,000 people went up to the 100 pirates and said you're not we're not allowing you to do this to us anymore and they take the guns and throw them in the ocean they don't have to hurt those people they pose no threat to the masses and that's what the masses never want you to ever figure out that unity there is strength in numbers you know take a twig you can easily break it Take a couple of dozen twigs, good luck trying to break it. Strength, that is what they don't want you to know. They want you divided and conquered. And even this awoken community, you see some of these people going around with arrogance, saying, oh, I'm better than you because I know more information or I'm out, out of the system. So in other words, you're that one or two slaves that they let go that are stuck on their pirate ship and are going nowhere they want to be. But if the masses all of a sudden took over that ship, well, now you can go wherever you want, especially go back home. So think about that as far as the ruling class. The few are controlling the masses through fear, intimidation, through debt, through gifts, through entertainment, through allowing people to protest, vent their frustrations. If, I highly recommend if you haven't seen this movie. I want you to see the movie The Dark Crystal. It's a Jim Henson film made in the early 80s. And I'm going to show you the symbolism behind this. Because one of the things I've learned about all the stuff I've been learning is a lot about symbolism. And this will really dictate the message that we need to hear. Now there were two groups that were once one. Then the dark crystal shattered, and the one group of aliens or species, whatever you want to call them, divided into the Skeksis 
which were the bad guys. And I forget the good guys. They kind of look like a cross between camels and horses, but they were good guys. But they were separated. We had evil and we had good. The yin and the yang. The one split into the many. Now, the way that they became one again, because the evil ones didn't want to become one, because they liked the fact that they were separated. They liked they had the power. They liked that individualism. Just like when you come to this planet to experience the third dimension, the physical realm, there are certain people who love the power, love that separation, loving the fact that they're individuals, loving themselves, and they'll do everything to keep it including making you think you're making a difference by meditating over in the corner by yourself or trying to do little tiny things that help yourself instead of the individualism. Now, the way the movie ended was when the good guys all took their tribe, everyone in their tribe, all went to the Skeksis, the bad guys, with the help of the, the hero. I forget his name, but that's irrelevant. They put the crystal back together again, and it unites the two become one. In other words, the many become the one. Now, just imagine if those good guys, instead of taking that long journey, which was difficult, where some died along the way, because change is never easy. Like I said, the uh, the road paved in gold, or what is it, the... Um, Road paved in gold leads to hell. I don't. That's some kind of expression like that. I, I'm not really good at stuff like that, but you know what I mean. Just imagine if those good guys decided instead of trekking that long journey, which would have been easier to not do, and nobody would have died, and everybody would have just been separate. Just imagine if they just sat in their good guy area and just meditated and did nothing. Yeah, they could have lived longer. They could have probably lived happier. But it didn't achieve their goal, which was all of them going and making the change that they wanted. Not hoping for change, not wishing for change, not waiting for change, but making change. And that is why governments are so afraid of people like myself and others who say it like it is. And here's the thing that you may not want to hear. Even in the awoken community, there are a lot of individuals that are so pompous and arrogant and are missing the point of what unity really is. And either knowingly or unknowingly are helping to have people follow them that become a bunch of individuals. So if you're out of the system, you found a way, congratulations. You're on that pirate ship. You're just not working. But you're allowing your brethren, the people you say you're fighting for and loved ones that you care about, you're letting them do the now the work and extra work to make up for you getting out of the system. So congratulations on your win. And until people understand that, we are not going to change. And that's why they try and label people like myself and others who try and speak the real truth. They label us as conspiracy theorists or crazy people because they want you to fear so you don't understand, you don't try and learn. So just imagine if you're in a prison. Think of it from the enemy's point of view. If you're the warden of a prison, you're one person and you'll have what? A couple of hundred Guards with thousands of inmates where you're outnumbered at least 20 to 1. If you only have a couple of people causing riots and problems, you can easily handle those. And you'll handle them with mass amount of force because you're trying to send the message. This is what's going to happen to you as an individual if you act up. So they use fear and intimidation. But just imagine if every single prisoner decided to say, you know what, it's time to take over. And they easily overwhelm, not by hurting, but just overwhelm the few. Throw them in their own jail cells. You don't have to kill them. And you could take control of that prison. Because you're in a prison. 
You just don't see the bars around you. They allow you to have a little bit of luxury, a little bit of choice, some little bits of their fiat debt notes. And some people are willing to sell out their fellow man for this debt notes because some people have more than others. So where is the unity? And I guarantee you there have been people that were watching this that already shut it off. And they're not watching the whole thing because they don't want to really hear the truth because truth requires effort. And most people really don't want to do that. So until people change their thought process from the individual to the masses and the whole, we are going to continue to do what we've been doing since recorded time. And that is be slaves, just different versions of slaves, being debt slaves to this corrupt system where the few are so proud that people want to sign petitions, that people want to hold up picket signs, where the few that really know a lot end up taking care of themselves instead of helping the masses to unite. And that's why like people, like I said, like people like Dean, Dean Clifford, love the guy. He's the inspiration for me getting on this path. He's in jail. Because maybe he doesn't understand the fact that an individual cannot change the world. There is no Superman. There is, I hate to say it for the very religious people, there is not going to be a carpenter with a beard coming out of the sky and save you. Religion is another form of divide and conquer. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have spirituality. Because religion is another way to separate the people. Because I guarantee you, the fact that I said there is not going to be a carpenter with a beard coming down to save you, I guarantee you some people shut this off, other people got mad, and yet others judged me. You know, didn't Jesus in his book once say, you know, why do you call me Lord when you do not follow what I say? Now, obviously that's not a direct quote. But what they're basically saying is, you know... You're calling me Lord, but you're not all the things I'm telling you that you need to do. You just pick and choose. That's not really, that's not how religion is supposed to be. But yet it's a way to divide people because depending on what century you were born or what area of the planet you were born, you're going to have different factions of religion all saying they're the right one. And what does that do? It makes somebody hate somebody else for their belief. I could believe that this pen is my God, and I could believe it so strongly that anybody that mocked me for it, I would kill them for it if I was a true believer in the religions that they teach. And in my mind, I could think, this is my savior. It's just a pen. Because if we all come from everything, then isn't this pen part of God's plan? Isn't this cell phone part of God's plan? This book? So everything is one, but yet we all act like a bunch of individuals. And until we unite, nothing is going to change. No matter what petition you sign, no matter what protest you have, if you're out of the system, congratulations. You're on a planet that's still run by corrupt people. Where are you going? And at any moment they want to take you away, how many of your followers are going to help you? How many people are right now knowing where Dean Clifford is and protesting outside or trying to get him out. I guarantee you, thousands of people that used to follow him before he went to jail, at this point, they probably don't even pay attention to what's going on with him. And that's sad, because he's being hung out to dry, so to speak. But he's showing that no matter all the right things he tries to do, they basically say, well, it's our system. We'll just change the rules. Or, you know, I know normally you could hand in that paperwork and it would work, but we're not gonna we're not gonna accept it. Oh, you're trying to send out information in your mail? Rip, rip, throw away. But just imagine if millions of people went to that prison and you said, you know what? We want Dean Clifford out, one of our fellow humans. What are they gonna do? You don't have to use violence. You never have to use violence. Just imagine a bully in school where this huge kid can go around every day picking on the weakest kids one by one, taking their lunch money, threatening to beat them up, and maybe beating up a few just to show that he means business. 
Now let's say that one bully is intimidating a hundred weak kids that couldn't defend themselves on their own if they tried. Now just imagine if all 100 of those kids surrounded that bully and said, you know what, you're not bothering us anymore. They don't have to punch him. They don't have to shoot him. They don't have to beat him with a baseball bat. They just say, that's it. We're not taking it anymore. We the masses, I don't care how strong you are, one kid is not beating up 100 all surrounding him. But yet they'll teach you in military that you need violence for peace. They train you. And that's why you have so many people defending the system or pretending that it's not a problem. Oblivious. Even when people, myself and others, will post videos like this, I guarantee you, very few people will watch it. Even less will watch it to the end. And even less will even respond to it. And even less will even follow it. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And yet, We've had slave systems since the days of what? The Roman Empire? The days of the Egyptians? Babylon? It's not changing. It's just different methods of slavery. They went from putting you in chains and locking you in a cage to letting you roam around not thinking you're in a cage. That's like having a zoo animal that's in a cage. He knows he's in a cage. He's walking back and forth and only can go a few feet here, a few feet there. He knows he's in a cage, and at any moment he might want to try and escape. And then all of a sudden they put him in an open safari. Now he's free to roam wherever he wants, but can he? Because there's a barrier around it. It may be acres instead of a little cage, which is obviously better, but is he really free? Try and leave your country. All the people that no longer have a driver's license gave away their birth certificate, no longer accepting the name. Try and leave the country that you live in and watch yourself get stopped and harassed and probably thrown in jail or even worse, God forbid, injured or killed by a bunch of people that are only doing their jobs and wonder why nothing is going to change. And that's one of the reasons why I stopped listening to some of these bigger names out there whether they are of pure intention or maybe they're trying to trick you by lulling you to sleep. Because if you're a prisoner, you do what the prison guards tell you. Whether he's a nice prison guard or an evil corrupts SOB. Stop being a follower. until we follow the right path, which is change that we have to make ourselves. If you're not willing to sacrifice, to be inconvenienced, then you're part of a corrupt system that loves being treated right, because starting over is going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. There's going to be many people that don't want it. That's why, like in the movie The Matrix, there are many people fighting for the system. And that's why that the um, the guy with the little goatee, the bald guy in the movie, who was part of the good team, all of a sudden betrayed them in the first movie. And he's sitting there enjoying that nice, juicy piece of steak that he got. And he was tired of eating all the goop. Well, you can live in a dream world, but you're asleep. You'll be taken care of in a prison. You'll be have food provided for you. You'll have a nice, cozy bed to sleep in. But if they want to all of a sudden take you into a dark room and have people beat the living daylights out of you and you disappear, if people allow it to happen, that's how they keep you in line. Or they can go on the other extreme and give all the prisoners ice cream and give them all a bunch of workout equipment and all the fun toys to play with, keeping you amused in your prison cell. They're not idiots. When you do things for thousands of years, you become quite an expert at it. What amazes me is how many people, even in this community, do not want to see it because it requires work. Because it may, means we have to get off our butts and millions of people have to go and say no. I mean, how many people know about what happened at the Bungie, Bungie, at the Bundy Ranch when they tried to take his land illegally? How people went there 
and they sacrificed their time and it was difficult and it was challenging and it was probably annoying and people feared how bad it could get. Well, you know what? They stopped it. For how long, who knows? But they stopped them. It's action. And you know what? They didn't have to pull a trigger to do it. So I think I've made this video long enough. At this point, if you're watching it this much and for this long, you're one of the people that gets it. Congratulations. Obviously, there are not many people out there that get it. They want to be lulled into sleep. They want to feel good at night so they can sleep better. If you want to keep listening to people who are giving you what seems to be good information, and it's not helping the system change at all, and it's just helping a few ind individuals, you're on the path to, you know, the path to hell, paved in good intention. Listen to the words, listen to the meanings, look at the examples. Are we getting better? Are we uniting? All of these people that are supposedly telling you to be an individual and lose the name, has it made the world a better place? There are still millions of people starving, going to bed starving every night. There's still thousands of people that won't wake up tomorrow because their village got bombed. There's still going to be thousands of animals that are abused and mistreated. But we don't want to know about that because, you know, that makes me feel bad. And I might have to actually use action. If you're not willing to do what it takes, then you're not ever going to be free. If you want to be the house slave, yeah, you're going to be treated better. But at any moment, you could be killed. Your life can change. They could take it away. It's disappointing how many people don't get it. How many people will actually be mad at me? I get. I bet you I will have people unfriend me on my Facebook page because of this video. And to those people, share this if you appreciate what I try and do. Give it a thumbs up. There are going to be people who don't understand it. There will be people who hate me for this. And I cannot worry about people that have too much hate in their heart or they're blind. This is for the people who really want to know what has to be done. Just imagine if you live in the United States Corporation, because we allowed it to change. But when the American Revolution happened, just imagine if all the people decided, well, there's nothing we could do about it. Let's hold up some signs. Let's complain. Let's have a petition signed. We'll all sign it and send it to the King of England. Just imagine if all of those patriots, instead of fighting for their freedom, which, like I said, you don't have to do it violently, but instead they all signed a petition and sent it. Because you know what? You ever hear the Declaration of Independence? Before the war happened, they signed that document and sent it. So obviously a signed document didn't do anything. They actually had to go and create a war to get their independence. We don't have to resort to that, because if you resort to war, then we haven't changed. We're not civilized. If you think hurting another person is the way to get freedom, then you're part of the problem. I don't care what justification it is. It's just easier I don't mind being judged. I don't mind being hated for the truth. But the truth shall set you free. And if you don't want to hear it, future generations are going to suffer and continue to suffer. And they're going to take away more and more freedoms. You think you're free? Congratulations. Go do whatever you want and see how well that works for you. So, I say it like it is because I care. And if you care about that, pass this on. And listen. And share this with people, even in this community. Because nothing's going to change until we do. So thanks for watching. I would love to hear your comments. Like it, share it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Barnon11970, if you already haven't. Or... If you're listening to this on YouTube, excuse me, and you're not part of my Facebook page, that's also Barnon 11970. I hope one day we can all be free. So instead of a few people making a lot of benefits out of this, a lot of wealth out of this, maybe everybody can. United we stand, divided 
we fall. That's a message even people in this truther community or whatever community you want to call it really need to start paying more attention to. I think some people should be ashamed of their arrogance, the egos. That's not unity. That's not faith. It's definitely not beneficial. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.